Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So, got a little bit of a story time here. Had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties as far as a few issues that I was having. Which, unfortunately, uh, due to one of the issues, we lost a fish. Yes, I made a mistake. Well, I don't know that I made a mistake. But, um, something was definitely wrong. And I guess I should say I made a mistake, but I didn't notice it soon enough. So, um... If you guys watched the last video, I believe it was in the last video, or maybe the one before that, but either way, if you go back a video or two, uh, you'll see where I introduced you guys to Marble. Marble was our, what's my dog out there doing? I don't know, but anyways, Marble was our large black Marble Angelfish. And unfortunately, Marble passed away. We no longer have Marble with us. And I didn't realize it. Um, I'd never dealt with this situation before, and it was something called velvet. So some of you guys might be familiar with it, some of you may not be. I am familiar with ick. I have heard of ick. Uh, so I've always heard of it since I was a kid. Uh, parents had fish tanks. Aunts and uncles had fish tanks. So I just had never dealt with ick myself. I did it on a saltwater aquarium uh, once or twice uh, back some years ago when I used to have saltwater tanks. Uh, but this was the first time that I ever really had to deal with it some ink in my tank. So basically what happened was, I was noticing that Marble looked like he was basically, no, my lips are chap. Ignore my lips, don't be staring at my lips. Get up out of my mouth. Uh, anyways, Marble looked like he was basically peeling. Like he had a terrible sunburn and was peeling. So if you ever seen somebody with a sunburn and it looked like their skin was just peeling off, it's kind of how he looked. But Apparently, that's not what it was. That's kind of what, at first I was like, oh, you know, maybe he's an he's older fish. He's five, six years old. Uh, maybe it'll clear up. Maybe it won't. Um, so I waited a few days, and I kind of noticed that it changed a little bit. He got just a little bit better. Well, he really wasn't getting better. So I'll drop a little clip of a little video my wife sent me while I was at work, unfortunately, of my fish. I'll drop it in right here, and you guys will see what it looks like. And... Okay, so basically what happened was he ended up with this Velvet. Velvet is basically Ix super powered big brother. And it basically attacks their gills and their, uh, their immune system and it shuts them down until they're just no longer alive. Uh, I tried everything I could. Uh, I was just Googling everything. I was talking to other fish people and people who, you know, have dealt with the situation before. I called around to some local pet shops. Unfortunately, all we have here where I live is um, some of these big box stores. And you know, I, I, not to bash anybody, but they, they don't always know what they're talking about. These people, they get hired, they get 10 minutes of training and get out on the floor, do your job. Well, anyways, so I, I just turned to Google and every other source I could figure out. And this was how I determined it was Velvet, you know, I YouTubed and everything. So I'm pretty sure that's what the situation was. Uh, Marble ended up with Velvet. So I tried to do my best to save him, keep him going. Um, they have some products that they sell. You know, I, I done a, a Melafix um, treatment on, with, on the tank. Uh, oh, and that's another thing. It, it's very, very contagious towards your other fish. So I... When I realized what it was, I, I hurried and I ripped him out of the tank. Actually, let me show you guys what I did. I mean, I destroyed my other tank. So I don't know if you guys remember this here. This is the 55 gallon that sits just to the left of the large tank, the 125. All right, so this is the 55. This is the one that had some plants and some cool rocks and everything was stacked up and it was looking great, running wonderful and everything. I gotta clean all that up there, it's got a little bit of stuff. But anyways, um, yeah, I ripped everything out of here because the water levels were great. They're pretty consistent with that tank over there. And there's all the rocks and stuff right there. I ripped all the rocks out, all the plants out, all the plants I had to add to this tank so it looks a little bit overpopulated right now, but actually it looks pretty good. Yeah, I took Marble out of that tank, put him in this tank, uh, let him stay in there. He was in there for about, I don't know, 24 to 30 hours or so. Then he started to act a little funny. He just wasn't swimming right. He was kind of like going to the side a little bit, kind of just facing downwards. Uh, let me turn this camera. He was just kind of facing downwards and he just wasn't doing good. So I looked up some other uh, home remedy type treatments 
And basically what I done was I put him in a five gallon bucket um, with about three gallons of water and I, I salted him basically. I, I tried to basically dehydrate him. Yes, I know it sounds weird, he's a fish, but yes, fish can be dehydrated by salt. So I, I basically tried to dehydrate him in the bucket. I put an aerator in there with a lot of air bubbles and everything flowing up. Um, uh, what is it? It's like one tablespoon of salt for every uh, gallon and I, I doubled everything. So actually I didn't double everything. Basically I did like four tablespoons of salt per gallon. I had three gallons in the bucket so there's about 12 tablespoons, maybe 15 tablespoons. Um, he did seem like he started to do a little bit better. He was swimming around because at first he was just straight down. Tail was up, face was down. And that's just how he was. He wasn't really moving. His little side fins were just a flapping a little bit here and there. His mouth was just slowly doing that. So after a while of sitting in the salt and, you know, I, I was moving the water around uh, along with the aerator. You know, he was kind of doing some barrel rolls and I don't know. It just wasn't really doing a lot. So I let him stay in that bucket for a couple of hours and he started to swim. I was like, all right, we're making some progress here. I was like, you know, uh. The, the salt, you know, he, I don't know if he started to get a swim bladder or something like that, but I know salt is pretty good at depressing that and, and helping to fix that situation. So I was thinking in my mind, all right, cool, he's starting to do good. He started swimming around, started doing all right. But then I also know that usually right before a fish dies, they'll seem okay. They'll be full of energy and they'll move all around and then it's just, you know, then they're done. And I'm pretty sure that's basically what happened. So he swam around for a while and he was good and then he just, it was done. He was, there was no more mouth movement, no more gill movement, no more fin movement. I tried to move him around in the water, but he, he wasn't even slimy anymore. And basically that's what happens. The, the ick super brother of, which is velvet, it attacks their slime coat. And it, like I said, it attacks their gills and their immune system and all their fins and their body functions basically. And so that's what happened. So unfortunately, yes, we no longer have our buddy Marvel, um, who was my favorite fish. Didn't have him long. Uh, with the place I got him from, they didn't have him long either. They only had him for about 24 to 48 hours before I purchased him from them. So they probably had no way of knowing. So I can't blame them. I feel like whoever did have Marvel um, probably had a little bit of an outbreak in the tank that they had. And they may have already lost a fish or two. And they kind of saw this coming, so they took Marvel into um, the pet shop where I purchased him. And he uh, was a trade-in. They traded him out for something else. Uh, I don't know if it was cash or, or what it was. But anyways, I bought Marvel. And about 48 hours later, or well, about 72 hours later maybe. I have about three days, four days. And uh, so yeah, unfortunately he is not here with us anymore. He's, sorry to put it this way, but he's sleeping with the fishes. And that's just part of it. This is uh, it's just part of the game. It is what it is. Um, it's a learning curve. Uh, you gotta learn to watch out for certain things when you buy fish. Unfortunately, we do not have him anymore. But however, I uh, was able to take him back to the pet shop. Uh, they were really friendly about the situation. They apologized even though I told them it was okay. They, there was no way they could have known as well. Um, he did have this cloudy haze to him. I explained everything to him. I showed him some videos and some pictures I took of him where I, 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 did, I, no, I noticed it afterwards. I guess I was so excited about him. At first, I didn't notice it all until afterwards or until right towards the end of it. And I started looking at videos and noticing what happened and whatnot. So, anyways, they are really nice about it. They gave me uh, one and a half times what I paid for him, actually, because I drove pretty far to come and get him, which was okay with me, but they wanted to compensate me with something as best as they could so that's what they did so they were really really good store to go to they still have a lot of great things uh really good people good service but yeah so unfortunately that was uh the little story time even though it turned into a big spiel about it but anyways here we go so i did yesterday i wanted to take you guys with me which i don't know why i didn't pick up and vlog any of it while i was there i went to go actually tank shopping yes tank shopping another tank i needed another tank so we'll get to that in a minute. But while I was out, I stopped by all kinds of pet stores. Looking and looking, and I just couldn't find what I was looking for. But then lo and behold, here we go. I'm walking by the fish, and there they were. 
two silver arowanas. I was like, holy cow, they got some. I like, these guys are trying to be the stars of the show. I'm trying to record uh, the new guy and they, they want to be all up all up in it. But anyways, yeah, there they are. I got grabbed two of those guys up. Uh, they were actually pretty cheap. They weren't very much. I expected them to be a little bit more, but they weren't bad at all. So yeah, we've got these two right here, Frankie and Joey. <laughs> actually, they don't have a name yet. That's just what I'm calling them. But yeah, pretty excited about them. So. Uh, it probably is not a good idea to actually have them in this tank, which actually I know it's not a good idea to have them in this tank. But right now, they're not big enough to eat anything. Uh, I mean, there might be a couple of, I don't know, little guppies, like that little guy right there, that they might be able to go after. But so far, I have not noticed them go after anything. And I guess if they do go after a guppy or two, I mean, they were originally just feeder fish that I was cycling the tank with when I first bought it. So, I mean, I guess it would be okay. I mean, that's the circle of life in the wild. So they eat other fish and that's just what happens. But they won't be in here long, hopefully. And I will end up taking them back out and putting them into a new tank or possibly just switching them over to this tank since like I was saying, I, I didn't even finish that story, did I? That I tore that tank apart. But anyways, I might end up putting them in this tank because right now there's nothing in it. And there's, I mean, there are those uh, black skirt tetras um, they're only in there because I can't catch them. They're too fast. If I drain the tank down, I could probably catch them. But I, I've tried to get them out of there and I just couldn't get them. So uh, while well, Marble was in there going through his uh, Melifix bath and his his uh, copper, uh, I forgot what it was called, copper something uh, treatment and salt treatment, it just didn't uh, help him. But uh, yeah, I left all them guys in there with him and they seemed to be fine. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do with them before they go and they get too big on me and they start eating my fish. Because if they eat my fish, I might eat them. No, I'm not really. I, I don't really like fish, but well, I like shrimp. I like shrimp. But um, yeah, uh, I'm going to have to figure out what to do with them. I bought them on a whim. I probably shouldn't have bought them. I, I just, I've always kind of like, oh, I wouldn't mind having the arowana. And there they were. They just got them in. Here I go with a debit card swiping. Idiot. Uh, anyways, but anyways, let me show you guys something else that I picked up. So while I was out at the store, um, I did pick up this guy right here. I picked up this 90 gallon corner flow aquarium system. It's uh, drilled and slotted already. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see if I can uh, flip her back a little bit there. And let that rest on that couch there. So I don't know if you guys can see it very well in there. So it's got the little... Um, corner overflow system and that glare is just terrible it's got that little corner overflow system back there um it's got all the plumbing with it i've got to plumb everything still it is um well you can't really see yet because everything's in the box but it's a uh, drilled and slotted it's got the holes in the bottom so i can run all my filtration right up through the top of it and yeah so got this guy now it, i do not have a stand so you know this is basically uh, a learning curve through a lot of this. I mean, I know quite a bit of it. I don't know everything. I, I would never claim to know everything about this. This is a, uh, and I'm doing it all myself. So this is, matter of fact, that's what this is. That's what this is gonna be called from now on. This is gonna be called DIY Aquatics. So we are we are going to switch this to DIY Aquatics. Um, I will, I'm gonna start a whole new channel here, of DIY Aquatics, cause this is do it yourself, learning day by day and figuring this out as you go. So hopefully we can get this all going and I can bring you guys along with me. So I think what I'm going to do today is since I have this tank sitting down here on the ground, which let me lay that back down before somebody knocks it down and it gets broken or cracked or something. So since I do have this and I did buy it and I was excited to get it, I couldn't wait to get it. Um, I do not have a stand. I do not have any uh, lights for it yet. I do not have, I do have a filtration system, a Marineland uh, C530 system. I have a spare one, brand new, never opened. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. I don't have any um, substrates or nothing yet. As you can see in my other tanks, that all of my plants are in there just going crazy ever since I put that uh, Spectrum 3.0 planted light in there. Everything has flourished and gone crazy. Um, you guys remember my wonderful light here, Christine, who keeps everything pristine. Christine has made everything just flourish and go crazy. So we got plants uh, that were like down here and this light's only been in here for, I'm talking about these big plants back here, all, the, all these tall things back here and leaning over and 
I've had to take some and wrap them around the branches and stuff because they were just like up there and leaning way over here. I've got some grasses back here that are about like three feet long. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I believe, set that other tank up, put the filtration on it, get me another one. I'm going to get Christine, a twin sister, and put that on the other tank. And I am going to start basically fragging my plants, I guess you would call it. I don't know what they call it in the freshwater world. So yeah, that's what my plan is. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this other tank set up. Um, it won't be today, obviously, but I am getting ready to, uh, I'm gonna DIY myself a stand today. I'm gonna build me a tank stand. I don't know if I'll finish it because um, I'm repurposing a bunch of two by fours that I had for a shelf that I built, I don't know, a year or two ago in, in a gigantic shed we, that we used to have that we sold. And I still have the, the wood from the shelves. Actually, I gave it to my mom and she was gonna burn it. So I took it back so I can make me a fish tank stand. So I'm gonna work on that today. I believe I'm gonna build it. I, I kind of don't like how low this tank here is. It's actually, uh, I think I measured the stand yesterday and it's actually only 28 inches tall. And every time I want to like look at the tank, it's, I gotta bend down and squat down and all that. I don't like that. And when I get time, I'm gonna rebuild this stand too. As good as it does look, it's a good looking stand. It's not the greatest stand though, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's all it's all press board and it's just, if it gets wet, it swells up down here. And it, it's just not that great. So as soon as I get a chance, uh, I'm gonna rebuild this large stand as well. But starting today, I'm gonna go ahead and go out here, I'm in this garage, excuse me, and I'm gonna start cutting up some of this wood and I'm gonna DIY myself a stand. I think I'm thinking like I'm gonna do like a 40 inch tall stand just a little over three feet I, I don't quite want to go four feet because it might be a little bit too tall but I think if I just went 40 inches um, and the tank being 24 inches tall um, that would be a pretty good um, that, that'd be pretty good that'd be like a 74 inch height to the top of the tank so at least um, the 40 inches the stand will be kind of at my waist height uh, versus me having to like bend way down just to look inside my tank, just like this one here. You see how I gotta bend down here just to, like I wanna dead on look at my fish, you know what I mean? I wanna just look right at them. I don't wanna have to do all this extra squatting and I can go to the gym for all that. But, so yeah, that's today's plan. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. I know it was just a bunch of boring, long talking, but I mean, it is what it is. And I'm going to pick this up in a second video, and maybe today we'll post both videos. I don't know. But I'm going to go out here. I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to go ahead and chop up some wood to the links I need. I'll probably slap you guys on a time lapse if you guys want to hang out and watch um, on the next video. So, all right. Appreciate everybody watching. And make sure you give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And uh, if you're not subscribed, appreciate it if you would be subscribed. And if you are subscribed, thank you for subscribing. And come back and checking out our channel. So, all right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.